the kids get to drawing. Turns out the one's pretty good. Well, with Genius Garage for the last five years, of course, we've been focused on college students, primarily in engineering, because they're the ones that are about to start their career and really kick off. Uh, a number of years ago, I did a program, uh, would be for high school level students as well as college in 124 scale slot car racing. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, check out my video uh, with regard to the secret way into engineering and racing with 124 scale slot cars. But there's a really unique story that I wanted to share with you that happened. Last year, I got an email for, through Genius Garage from a gentleman who had two young sons who were really into race cars, loved them a lot. And he asked if there was a time that he could bring them by to see our Genius Garage race cars. And of course I said sure, because all the Genius Garage stuff here exists just to teach and inspire young people. So they came by, uh, two young men, I, I don't remember the one uh, son's age, but probably somewhere around that 10, 11, uh, and the other one was 13. Anyway, so sitting in the race cars, the Indy car, the IMSA Corvette, the prototype car, just having a great time. And they're very nice boys and very quiet. And I said to them, before you go, uh, to the gentleman, I said, if you want, you and your sons can um, use the Genius Garage Design Studio and draw some stuff with our nice markers and everything. And just as a little bit of fun. So the kids get to drawing. Turns out the one's pretty good. And uh, it was fun to see, and I got an idea, and I said to the gentleman, I said, you know, your, your son's actually really good, uh, and if he likes cars, I don't know what he, his aptitude might be or where he wants to go with school and career one day, but if he works on designing and drawing cars, this is something that could help him get into industrial or transportation design in the future, or even, of course, be great if you're doing an engineering or other creative degree, and uh, at the very least, it'd be fun. So I said, I tell you what. Um, no cost, no, no catch, but if you want to bring your son by once or twice a week, um, maybe in the afternoon, I'd be happy to mentor your son. You can use our stuff for free and just develop and, you know, see if he's got some talent. So uh, the father agreed, and he would bring in his son for, for months. He would come in once or twice a week, usually at 4 o'clock, and stay for a couple hours. And that's when things were winding down a little bit. Maybe I was working with other students in college, the collegiate level and whatnot, or maybe I was working on something. So it uh, really suited it nice. And the father was so nice and so supportive. He'd sit in the chair, read a book, <laughs> while his young son would do this. And the kids just kept getting better and better and better. And this 13-year-old kid who's pretty quiet in school because he loves cars and he loves racing. But that's things that older people are into. Not kids in school. They're not into that. So he's kind of quiet. And, uh, but he's just he's so knowledgeable and so excited and so studious in learning. And he's just getting better and better at designing and drawing cars. And so I started saying, okay, well, what kind of car do you want to design? You know, where's the engine? What kind of engine? Is it rear-wheel drive? Is it front-wheel drive? Is it all-wheel drive? You know, all the things you think of when you're coming up with car concepts. And he, uh, he does this concept, I think he called it the Benino, uh, Superior, Superium Benino. I <laughs> hope I remembered that correct. But he wanted to do a really cool rear-wheel drive sports car. And I think he did a great job. But, you know, you kept mentoring him with the, the spatial consideration, the multi-point perspective. Of course, how to render color and think about reflections. Is it a shiny surface? Is it a matte surface? What is that? And then, of course, how to relate all that in a way, um, as you would in design, so the artist or the designer can most quickly and efficiently render something that the viewer will mind will understand. Because in art and design, it's not necessarily drawing a flawless drawing of the perfect one, but it's doing something that the viewer's mind's eye will think is perfect. And that's the most efficient way to do it. And he just kept getting better and better and really enjoyed it. So months later, um, I said to the father, I said, um, you know, I think your son should do something mechanical. I mean, he's obviously too young to be part of the Genius Garage Full Racing Team, but I'd be happy to mentor him something if, you know, he wants to build a go-kart or some sort of project. And he's like, sure, yeah, I'd love to get him to do something like that. And uh, so me being me, <laughs> I, uh, I'm like, we should restore a go-kart like I had when I was a kid. And that's where that started. So I kept searching, and I found an old Carter Brothers chassis from, like, the 80s. Um, and it was ragged out mess. And um, bought it out of, like, Detroit somewhere. And uh, brought it home. And, and, you know, kids today, you, you say they, they're just not into anything. They don't want to build. They don't want to get dirty. They don't want to get hands-on. Um, and they can't see the force of the trees or where something's going to go. But this 13-year-old kid got it. 
And that dirty, ratty go-kart chassis was the coolest thing in the world to him, you know? And now he gets to build a car right alongside all the big race cars, professional level racing cars that the college kids do. And it's super cool. And of course, that escalated quickly. <laughs> so being a go-kart in a racing shop, we have IndyCar wings laying around and we have big sheets of carbon fiber and uh, you know the motors and we have airplane parts and everything. So over the next while, you know, we're thinking about it and what can we build and what would be cool based on what we have and where to take it. So it quickly evolved into doing a six wheel Tyrrell Formula One go-kart style where it had the two big wheels and tires in the rear and then the four steering wheels in the front. And of course, if you're a 13, 14 year old boy, that's the most exciting thing in the world, right? Um, and, and if you're me too, that's still the most exciting thing in the world. Anyway, so for some months we've been working on that together. Once or twice a week his dad will bring him in. And it's really fun too because then the father and the son get to work together and have that project as well. Um, so if I'm working with other students or doing something else, they keep going and I come in. And so this, this young man, he gets to learn. You know, maybe he's not doing the welding yet. Uh, but he gets to learn everything, the painting, the building, the cutting, the conceptualizing, the welding, the fabrication, the materials, what to consider. So why I'm bringing this up is, one, it's, an, it's, a, it's a cool story. Because very rarely does a young kid get just a random magic dream shot to come into some awesome, exciting inventor world of race cars and airplanes and pterosaurs and build a dream go-kart. It just doesn't happen. But it's exciting to me because... You know, school can only do so much for young people across the board. And generally speaking, school best helps people in the middle of the bell curve. And the very creative or very driven students, there are so few outlets. There are so few opportunities for them to really go somewhere. So even though it's just one young student who's, who's uh, <laughs> lovingly been referred to as the hamster, that's his new, new cool nickname, he is the hamster, um, it's just a wonderful opportunity. And even if he doesn't go into engineering or design or something like that, it's something that's going to give him tremendous confidence as a young person and ability and excitement. And you know, maybe sets the standard for him to pay it forward in a way one day to other young people and help them out. But it is very exciting. The cart's going wonderfully. And it continues his educational experience just from the two-dimensional you know, art, conceptualizing of design, and now making it real. And he gets to start learning the fabrication and the conceptualizing, the process thinking, and everything that goes into that, as well as weighing uh, the importances and priorities. Because you can't necessarily build everything exactly the way you want to in your head. We're not going to autoclave a carbon fiber monocoque go-kart. We're going to use steel too, but we're going to use some carbon fiber and fine parts and things like that. So for instance, instead of making a side pod, well, we've got some you know, airplane uh, retractable landing gear fairings, doors, that happen to be a great shape. And we happen to have an IndyCar Speedway wing around. And we happen to have an extra one of those aftermarket aluminum wings for the back of, you know, like Japanese cars and imports that we cut down that makes a front wing. So kind of being scrappy and learning to find things that already exist and then how you can put them together in an amazing product or project is a super valuable lesson. Because in business and life and creating products, that's oftentimes how great things are uh, solved and done. That's how entrepreneurs and inventions come to be. So it is very exciting. We're not finished yet with a six-wheel uh, Tyrrell-inspired Formula One go-kart, but uh, it's going to be done here pretty soon. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy this little video, uh, and maybe you'll enjoy seeing the hamster's progress. But uh, just another great opportunity that we get to give to young people here at Genius Garage, uh, and I'm certainly looking forward to the growth of Genius Garage to come. I hope you guys subscribe. And we'll see you next time.